Three Point Shot, Chapter 2 The shaky elevator made its way down to the trial room slowly but surely. Investigation went more or less smoothly after Shuichi's experiment with the vent system. Kaede had been somewhat quiet throughout, taking point in questioning here and there, but for the most part leaving the detective to do what he did best. Regardless, his concern shone through. Are you worried? She nodded. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tell them, aren't I? That would be the best way to go about it. They'll accept your reasoning a bit better if you're forthcoming about it, Shuichi explained. I, I still don't know if I can do this, she muttered, lowering her head. A brief moment of silence went by, and Kaede soon discovered a bit of weight had been placed on her, her foreheads being slightly constricted. When she raised her hands to check, her suspicions were confirmed. Your hat? Shuichi scratched at the back of his head. Like I said, I use it so I don't have to look people in the eye, but right now, you need it more than I do. Kaede gripped the brim and adjusted the cap to fit better to her head. She stole a glance at the now hatless boy and gave a small grin. Thanks. Shuichi grinned as well. It... it looks good on you, he muttered sheepishly. Kaede chuckled. I wish you had an extra, though. You've got pretty bad hat hair. The black-haired boy ran his hands across his scalp, noting the ahoge he traditionally concealed, and offered a half-hearted, Yeah. A sudden clanging noise alerted the group to the fact that the elevator had finished its journey into the depths of the school, and they were ushered to the trial grounds. Here we go, Kaede whispered to herself. The students each took to their respective podiums, and the trial began. All right, let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial, Monokuma declared. After a period of debate, you will take a majority vote for who you believe is the blackened. If you're right, only the blackened is punished. But if you're wrong, everyone else is punished and the killer is allowed to leave the Ultimate Academy for gifted juveniles scot-free. Just like our papa to give such a perfect explanation, Monotaro exclaimed. And it only took him one try, Monofani noted. Monosuke looked over his abacus before responding, Well, he is an old hand at this sort of thing. Hell yeah, Monokid shouted. We've got our work cut out for us to be that good someday, especially Monodom. Monodom remained silent. Old hand? Kaede wondered. Have there Have been, been other, other killing, killing games, games before? before? Shinguji started the discussion amongst the students. If I may be so bold as to begin our debate, I have two questions I must ask. Firstly, why did the killer not make use of the first blood perk? Kaede's voice wouldn't escape her throat. When she thought she'd killed Rontaro, her plan was to pass up the first blood perk and use the class trial to uncover the mastermind's identity. But now that it seemed like she wasn't guilty, she was left baffled. What other reason was there to give up on a free pass to escape? My first instinct, Ryoma answered, is that they have something to gain from the trial process. But the only results are them leaving or dying, Kaito countered. So why risk dying when they could leave automatically? You don't think, Sumugi pondered out loud, beginning to shudder at the prospect. Whoever it is wants to kill all of us, do you? I don't think that's the case, Shuichi interjected. I can't imagine anyone would truly desire to see 15 strangers dead after only a few days. Then there must be some benefit to the trial itself, Kirumi surmised. I think so, the detective replied. They have something to gain from going through the motions. Well, they're a dumbass if they think this will work, Kaito proclaimed. After all, we've got the ultimate detective on our side. Shuichi was suitably embarrassed by this. Th thanks Getting to my second question then, Korikyo interrupted. What was the purpose of Saihara-kun's demonstration with the shot put along the row of bookcases? Shuichi took a moment to glance at Kaede before she gave him a nod to indicate that he was free to proceed. Iruma-san, would you please show us your aerial picture of the library? Miyu grinned from ear to ear. Of course you'd need the help of a genius like me. She pulled out the panoramic picture she had made through the use of a drone. 
Drink it all in, bitches! Shuichi pointed to the bookcase on the picture. Monokuma brought up a larger version on the various view screens around the class and highlighted the area Shuichi referred to. As you can see, there's a pathway constructed by a row of books on the top of the bookcases. It leads from the open vent down to where we found Amami-kun's body. And you never would have thought to look if not for me, Kokichi boasted. Be that as it may, Shuichi said, choosing to ignore Kokichi. My immediate response to seeing this was thinking the murderer could have thrown a ball through the vent and the pathway would lead it to strike Amami-kun. Ah, a long-range move like that, Himiko mumbled. That's pretty advanced magic. But Shuichi and Kokichi tested that, like, earlier, right? Angie asked. It didn't actually work that way. Apparently not, Shuichi confirmed. Hold on, Kibo interrupted. That ventilation shaft connects to the classroom next to the stairwell. The, well, let's call them attacker, would have had to throw the ball from there. And the only two people in that room were... I threw it. Kaede's words made the entire room go silent. I don't think I killed Amami-kun, but I definitely tried to. The quiet quickly gave away to madness. Y you what Kaito exclaimed. This, this is a joke, right? Chabashira added. Gonta can't believe this. He won't believe it. <laughs> now things are getting fun. Hmm, was all Maki offered. God didn't tell me about this. Bakamatsu, you tried to... The trouble with being an ultimate pianist was that Kaede's sense of hearing was highly acute. She could make out every word her classmates said, and it was just as heart-trending as she imagined it would be. But one voice cut through the maelstrom of sound. Everyone, let her talk! The room once again went quiet with Shuichi's words. Kaede turned her gaze to the black-clad boy and saw a look of fierce determination in his eyes. Saihara-kun... You're actually, actually pretty, pretty cool, cool, she thought. Sorry, he began, but we won't be able to move forward until you listen to her. All eyes were on the capped blonde, and she took a deep breath before she set the truth free. The more Saihara-kun told me about his plan, the more worried I got that it wasn't going to work. We were putting all our eggs in one basket, and we only had one shot to find the mastermind. So I... I thought... I... I... She gulped. I should make sure the Mastermind couldn't keep the game going. I figured out how I could get the weapon to the scene of the crime without anyone, not even Saihara-kun noticing. I turned the flash on one of the cameras back on to get the Mastermind into place, and I was going to do it. I did do it. She pulled the brim of Shuichi's hat down, as far as it would go. I tried to kill the mastermind, and now... Now, Amami-kun's dead instead. Tears began to streak down the pianist's face. I'm so sorry. I didn't want this to happen. Quit crying. Kaida's head popped up to see who had made such a rude remark. Unsurprisingly, it was Oma. Saihara-chan already proved it wasn't you. Your little murder machine didn't work right, so you've got nothing to feel guilty about. A person is dead, Oma-kun! Haide shrieked. So maybe you should spend less time whining and more time figuring out who the real murderer is, hmm? Oma shot back with a smirk. Hey, lay off her, you jerk! Momoda shouted. Momoda-kun, Kaede muttered, touched. A degenerate male such as yourself has no right to be so cruel, Chabashira added. Chabashira-san. Akamatsu-san, Kibo said. Please don't cry. None of us can blame you for trying to save us all. Kibo-kun. If anything, it's my fault, Shuichi reassured her, feeling somewhat dejected. I sort of forced my plan on you. I never asked you what you felt we should... It's fine, Kaede said, cutting him off. She wiped the tears from her eyes. Everyone, thank you. 
A feeling of warmth and camaraderie came over the group for the first time since the body discovery announcement rang through the school's halls. The crime was far from solved, but Kaede had been absolved of guilt she didn't deserve. That was what mattered. End of chapter 2